Hey everybody, welcome to this week's video. I am painting today on a piece of 9 by 12 UART Dark, and this is the 800 grit paper. So it's a much finer grit, um, and it has some really fun qualities to it. Since we've been talking about underpaintings lately, I wanted to paint for you a piece um, without an underpainting on a pre-toned paper. Since this paper is pre-toned, this dark color, obviously the darkest value already exists in our painting, which is the color of this paper. I know it's difficult to see my pencil marks that I made. Um, there, you know, you can kind of see it. Graphite does show up on this dark UART, and I did the same thing that I do with the lighter, you know, lighter papers, which is I blocked in my my main shapes of, you know, where I'm going to be painting this tree bank, the distant tree bank, and then the reflections down in the water. You can see the reference photo over there on the left. Um, and I am gradually lightening the value. Since I already have this darkest value, I don't have to put it in with, you know, normally I put it in with a dark blue new pastel or acrylic ink. But since it already exists, I just have to change my thinking um, to, to, you know, trick my mind to think, you know, I already did that. I already, you know, that, that um, technique, that phase of the underpainting is already finished. So now it just becomes my job to gradually go up in value. Um, I've applied a very dark green, um, just slightly, you know, uh, like I often do, just go very lightly, you know, light steps up a ladder as far as value. So that first pastel was a very dark green Terry Ludwig. This is a cooler green, um, more pine, you know, these are pine trees. And so I wanted to bring in some pine colors to the, this, you know, this um, bank of trees along this um, water's edge. Like I've talked about in recent videos, whenever you're painting water, what you're putting up above the water, also you need to mirror down in the water. And when you pull straight down that, you know, that indicates the water is coming towards you. Um, you can either do that with your hand, if you don't mind getting your hands messy, or you can use a piece of pipe foam, or you can even just pull the pastel down. But then also just across the paper in a horizontal manner will create those ripples and that fun um, you know just the flat effect of a flat a flat water how you know I'm doing right there I'm pulling that down and then also smoothing it across I'm you know th this um, is a very neutral kind of mauvey ochre um, kind of a reddish ochre pastel that I'm using that's a unison and you know the looking at the reference photo how the, the colors of the underbrush are um, are warmer than the trees and so you know put, put, putting those that warmth in even with this very new these very neutral colors right now they look very vibrant because they're they're competing with the darkness of the paper usually that's not the case you know we we usually have lighter areas in our paper um, if we're using the more oatmeal colored um, UART or even a white piece of UART or a lighter toned piece of paper. Um, and so your, you know, the, this, that black color really just shows the vibrancy of these pastels. I'm continuing to go up the ladder in value and even in saturation as well. This is another Terry Ludwig green and I'm just going to pull it straight down, um, you know, just, just to show how that area of those trees are being reflected by this dark water. And this um, this video is actually a pretty fast video. It's, it's, you know, not even 15 minutes, which was a real time. I, you know, this dark paper really just helps you save that step of having to wait to do an underpainting and then wait for the underpainting to dry and then adding, you know, it just, it really saves some time. I thought, and I haven't used a lot of UART Dark. I, I have used it before, but mainly when I've been painting a sunset or a very dark nocturne image. Um, and so this was one of the first times I've used it in a more traditional landscape with water and trees. And so I loved working with it. I really loved the 800 grit, which is so much smoother than I'm used to using. Um, it lended um, some really beautiful effects, of, especially in the edge work. Because there's, there's less tooth, you can blend a little easier, um, and that itself can create some fun tech, you know, fun um, effects. 
I work with greens kind of going back and forth between cool and then going back to warm and then going back again, just layering those greens in, first putting it up in the tree and also pulling it back out. And then that, that sky color, that's a very, those are very, very light cobalt blues. And that's just, you know, thinking about almost carving out, carving that sky into the tree and showing, you know, that lightest value, which of course is going to be in the sky. And then also the reflections that I'm going to put in the water. I'm going to cut in a few just very, very small sky holes up there at the top of that just to show, you know, that there is sky behind these trees to give those trees a little bit of air. And then I'm also going to start bringing down these reflections into the water using those same colors that are in the sky right now, which is the very light cobalt blue. Terry Ludwig. I love the Terry Ludwig Best of the Blues. That's the, the set that I have and I, I play with those a lot whenever I paint water and skies. And now I'm just going to bring it straight down. And of course that's a darker value of a blue. And that's, you know, I've mentioned before, that's how I love to work. I love to make the foreground of water darker than the high you know the height of its reflection the, the highest value reflection usually that high you know that very light high value is not at the base of my paintings because that really can lead the eye and so you can see right here that i pull you know that's a very warm townsend um, that pastel that i that i'm using um, and i pull it straight down and then also smoothing across especially where those values meet a darker edge so on those areas where those those colors are shifting I like to soften that edge just a tad um, just by tapping it also creating you know that that center area where that reflection is that's kind of where I want to create the highest reflection um, value or highlight I guess you could call it and um, also now just putting in some tree trunks this is a mauve new pastel and how i do that is you know i didn't have any tree trunks in these trees and so i just gently swipe up very lightly into those tree um those trees that i've created and and al altering the angle so i pull, pull it up and then the mirror image is the opposite angle and so that is how you create really convincing um, tree trunk or branch um, reflections think about whenever you're doing um, whenever you're utilizing this technique to not you know there are branches that you have already painted that are coming out towards you and if you put a trunk over it it will it won't be um, it won't make sense to the viewer because that trunk really is actually behind those branches coming out towards you and so i don't make solid lines from top to bottom wherever my trees are um, and if i've accidentally marked over and a, a clump of you know tr leaves that i've painted i will soften that edge with my pinky finger just so that tree trunk moves backwards um, behind those that 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 um, area of branches I added a little bit of um, more saturated orange and I'm also redefining the edge of the bank where the water is hitting you know underneath and again lapping against this bank of you know where these trees are with that underbrush um, the added warmth of that orange just really you know um, works beautifully with the cooler greens the blue, you know, the, the cool blue of the water adds just kind of a really pretty glow. Um, and this is straight charcoal that I'm using here. Of course, it is very, very dark. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, um, make too thick of lines with the charcoal because it can really draw the eye. But I, I love to add that really dark edge underneath, underneath a tree, you know, this, this bank of, on the water. I'm really loving the warm underbrush and so I'm just gently um, highlighting it a little bit, especially, you know, in this almost if this um, composition 
has multiple types of armatures happening right now. Um, what I'm wanting to really um, have the viewer focus upon is the circular area of the highest highlight of the water and then up into the trees and then over into the, those right hand banks. And so that's really what I'm working towards. And I will post a picture of what I'm talking about in the, the, the different armatures that I have going here. There are multiple um, and those, you know, are always things to keep in your, to keep in mind whenever you are, whenever you're um, deciding upon a composition or, or even within the painting process, how you can really guide the eye around a piece of art um, for your viewers. Pretty delicate here. This is um, another Terry Ludwig pastel that is a more neutral blue, and I like to use it um, especially at you know those edges of value shifts. And also, it, it's just a, it's a good it's a good blue. It's a cooler blue that is also neutral that just helps with that what I call the bridge values pulling it down, really looking at the reference photo here and how there are some, you know, other reflections going on, you know, defining and refining those, that um, beautiful reflection in the water. I don't know what I was going for there, I'm looking for something. Oh, maybe <laughs> walking around my studio. Um, but, you know, this, this piece um, really came together very quickly. Um, I, I was getting my, my uh, mat. So that's an 8x10 mat, which I probably would mat this either a 9x12 or an 8x10. I just don't have a 9x12 mat. Um, and those edges that you can see that I have taped off, yes, that prevents the pastel from from being in the, it makes little blank triangles at the four corners, but that's very easy to correct when you remove the tape. You can just kind of blend your finger and, you know, bring some of that same color down, especially if you're wanting to stick with your original, um, with your original uh, aspect ratio of your paper, nine by 12, eight by 10, 12 by 12, you know, all of the different sizes. So I'm just kind of refining and adding in some little trunks here and there, looking at the reference photo to see, um, you know, maybe not adding all of them, um, but, you know, really wanting to just convey that the over, you know, this, the branching of these trees, tapping a little bit of foliage in again over those tree trunks. If I've, if one has been you know, too bright, or if I've accidentally marred an area where there was a, a, a cluster of leaves that I wanted to create, you can just tap some of that, those le that leaf color back over your trunk. So that's it, you guys. This UART Dark helped this piece come together very quickly. I hope you give it a try. I used, once again, the 800 grit. It was super fun. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon.